Well, good morning, everyone. Yeah, welcome to Football Sunday. Woo woo. I don't know about you, but I am like really excited for this. I've been looking forward to this for a while. Uh, I saw some of the chilies coming in, um, and so we're really excited. I think we have seven or eight different chilies that we're going to be testing and rating, and, and you guys are going to be determining the winner of the chili cook-off, so uh, make sure you stick around, as well as I'm excited to watch the game and hang out and eat other food, and we're going to be doing giveaways and gift cards like Christina said, so I'm really looking forward today. Uh, the truth is, I get excited about every Sunday, uh, I, I really do, but there's something special about Football Sunday for me. I get extra excited when it comes time to Football Sunday. Uh, see, here's the thing. I grew up in a football town. I didn't grow up in Buffalo, but I did grow up in another football town uh, called Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All right, so I see we have some Pittsburgh fans, and, and Pittsburgh, for those of you who don't know, it is home of the six-time Super Bowl champions, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes, it's okay. I know we're in church. You guys can boo. That's all right. <laughs> uh, so I, I grew up as a Steelers fan. Um, and, and really, here's the, the thing, is, is that growing up in Pittsburgh, you don't really have an option to not be a Steelers fan. Um, in fact, the hospitals there, when you are born, they wrap you in a terrible towel. Uh, not even kidding. Like, legitimately, they send parents home with all the necessities of life. Here's a nook. Here's, you know, some diapers. And here is your terrible towel for your baby. Um, so I was probably wrapped in a terrible towel as a baby. And so uh, it, was, it was a thing that football's fun, right? It brings people together. And, and it really, even though we might like different teams, I think there's this unity factor to football. And I have a lot of memories about football growing up. You know, as a kid, I have memories of growing up and playing football uh, with the other neighbors. I remember growing up and, and playing tag football, right, two-hand touch, or, or even flag football. And even occasionally, we would play tackle football. Uh, but the problem was we didn't have yards, so we would play in the middle of the street. And I'll just tell you from experience, tackle football in the middle of the street is probably not the best idea. Still have some scars uh, from those ones. But I, I remember playing football, and then I remember watching football growing up. I, I would watch football with my dad, a big Steelers fan, and he would uh, scream at the TV. He would yell about bad calls. He would cheer on the Steelers. And I remember sometimes he would even pay me a quarter to hold the antenna so that the Steelers game came in better. Yeah, like this is the kind of stuff we're talking about here. Um, and, and so I remember watching football, playing football, watching football, and even now, I enjoy watching football. I feel like I'm a little bit of my dad. Now I'm the one screaming at the TV, cheering on the teams, and, and my kids are jumping around with me, you know, getting excited when a touchdown is scored. But there's one other thing that I like to do, and that is to play fantasy football. Anyone play fantasy football? Okay, a few of us, looks like this side of the room, they all congregate together or something. Uh, a few of us play fantasy football, and what it is is basically you pick players, and those players, based on how well they play in their game, you get points for them on your team. So I play in two different leagues. I have a, a friend's league that I play fantasy football, and then I play with my family. Now, in my friend's league, I'll tell you that I'm doing pretty good this year. I have eight wins and one loss. So, so I'm doing pretty good in that league. And then I go over to my family league, and I am the exact opposite. I am one win and eight losses. And these are to my nephews and my nieces. Like, they're all under the age of 12, and I am getting my butt kicked. Uh, so, so I enjoy football. Football's always been a, a fun part of life. And, and I know that that's kind of what it's like here in Buffalo as well. Buffalo is a football town, and I'll tell you this, that even though I am a Steelers fan, and even though I grew up, and, and the Steelers will always be my number one, I was excited to move up here to take on Buffalo as my second team. See, when I moved up here, I, I made a commitment. I said, you know what? I'm going to cheer on the Bills every single game, except when they play the Steelers. And... Uh, it's, it's fun because Steelers and Bills aren't really in the same division, so you don't really play each other too often. And so I've had fun moving up here and cheering on the Bills as well. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, when I first moved up here five years ago, that there was a lot of excitement about the Bills. See, I have a brother-in-law who you would call a diehard Bills fan. 
Someone who has season tickets, he goes to every single game in the snow, in the cold, every game, doesn't matter. He'll go, he'll sit out there, he'll cheer on the bills. And when I moved up here five years ago, he said, Eli, this is the year for the Buffalo Bills. So this is the year we are going to the Super Bowl. And that's because we have got a new player. We got a new draft pick. Uh, He's young. He's quick. He's smart. He's a hard worker and a hard player. He is going to take us to the Super Bowl. And that player is Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins. And so I moved up here and and I'm hearing all of this and I'm seeing everyone in their Sammy Watkins jerseys and everyone's getting excited for the season to start. People are jumping through folding tables and squirting mustard on each other's faces and I don't get it, but I'm, I'm like, okay, there's something exciting here. So the season starts and obviously that season didn't turn out as great as anyone would have hoped in Buffalo, more like my family fantasy football league, uh, as far as records go. Um, But that didn't stop the hope. See, when that season ended, my brother-in-law said, Eli, you know what? I I know I said last year, but this is the year for the Buffalo Bills. This is the year that we're going to the Super Bowl. And that's because we have a new head coach. And he's going to take us to the Super Bowl. And his name is Rex Ryan. Yeah, I see some of you remember him. (laughs) Yeah, so, uh, oh, we can go back to, uh, to Rex Ryan. Yeah, so, so he was supposed to be the one. It, we were waiting for him to take us to the Super Bowl. And so that season goes on, and it doesn't turn out as anyone would have hoped. Um, in fact, it ended up a little bit worse. But people said, you know what, give them time. Just give them one more year to build the team. And so we did, and there was that hope for the next season, and then ultimately he gets fired and the Bills are still struggling. But then, the next thing happened. They said, you know what, this is the year for the Bills because we have a new, new head coach. And this is where I kind of jumped on board. This is where I started to believe, right? I was starting to, to, to get on board with this because his name was Sean McDermott. He was about hard work and about if you put in the work, it's gonna pay off and you just trust the process. And so I started getting into it and thinking, this is the time for the Bills. And ultimately, he did. He took the Bills to their first playoff appearance in a long time. Yeah, woo. (laughs) And so the next year, we thought, this is going to be it, right? This is going to be it. We're going to build on this, and it's only going to get better from here. But obviously, that didn't happen. We got a quarterback named Josh Allen who got hurt. And the Bills are where they are currently. I'll tell you, I learned something from moving up here five years ago. I learned that being a Bills fan is tough. You guys are committed, man. I, I, can't, I can't even fathom. You guys are so committed, and, and I love it. Because year after year, the hope is there. Year after year, we think that this is going to be the year for Buffalo. And then ultimately something happens and our hope lets us down. Now maybe you're a football fan and maybe you know what I'm talking about today. Maybe you felt these emotions watching the game. Maybe you aren't and that's okay too. But here's the thing. I think that a lot of times in life we do this exact same thing. We do this exact same thing. We fall into this same cycle in our personal lives. See, let me explain a little bit. I think sometimes we go like this and we say, well, this is going to be my year. This is going to be the year where things change in my life. You know, this is going to be, I know we've had bad years in the the past, but this is going to be the year. This is going to be the moment that's going to change everything. This year, I'm going to be happier. This year, I'm going to feel more fulfilled. Well, this year is going to be the year that I I beat that addiction. This is going to be the year that, that I get out of the depression. This is the year for me. And so what we do is we try to add things. And so we start to get excited about the next big thing. We say, you know what? If I can just get a new job, If I can just get a new job, then this will be the change in my life that I need to to keep going forward. If I can just maybe just get a raise, if I can just get a, a pay raise, then I'll start saving money and I'll travel more and I'll start feeling more fulfilled. Maybe we do it in our relationships. You know, if I 
can just get into a relationship this year and have someone to share my life with, then that will be the change and that will make the difference in my life. Or maybe you're in a different season and you say, you know, if I could just move out of my parents' house, if I can just get out of the basement and get my own place, that's going to be the change that I need. That's going to be the one thing that's going to make a difference. But see, here's the thing is we get those things. But it doesn't change the things that we are feeling. It doesn't really make that big of a difference in our lives. And so we're stuck in a cycle trying and, and constantly searching and looking for the next thing. See, but that isn't the way that God wants us to live our lives. See, God designed us to live a life that has hope and a confident hope. Look at what it says in the book of Ephesians. It says this. It says, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us in his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. See, I love this because it really tells us the things that God desires for us. This verse, they tell us that God desires good things for us, great things for us that come out of a relationship with him. But it continues in verse 18, and it says this. It says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope that he has given to those he called. See, this verse tells us that God desires to give us a confident hope. Not a hope that's going to fade away, not a hope that will ever let you down, but he wants to give you a confident hope. Because here's the thing. The truth is that sports teams will let you down. Sometimes year after year after year after year after year, right? People will let you down. Your closest friends, your family, even yourself, people will let you down. Things will let you down. See, it doesn't matter if you get that new car. That new car eventually will break down at some point. That new car will eventually rust. The new phone that you get that you think is going to make your life so much happier and fulfilled, it's going to eventually become outdated. And we find ourselves spinning in this cycle. But that's not the kind of hope that God wants to give you. He wants to give you a confident hope through Jesus that can't fade away. So today we're going to look at three things. Three things that Jesus gives us hope for. That Jesus gives us confidence in. First one is this, is that we can have confidence in our past. We have confidence in our past. Now, maybe you're sitting here and you're thinking, well, that seems like a weird place to start. Like, confidence in our past, like, the past is the past. What's over is done with, and, and we don't really have to think about it anymore. I mean, the best we can do is to try to learn from it and, and kind of just move forward. But the past is the past. It doesn't really mean anything at this point. Or maybe you're sitting here and you're thinking, well, Eli, you know, I, I've had a past and I've been hurt and there's some horrible things that have happened in my past and, and I don't like to talk about the past. I, I just kind of want to move on and try to my very best to forget about the past. I, I, I don't want to think about it. Or maybe you're sitting here and you're like, you know, I, I've made mistakes in my past. You know, there's things that I've done that I've not been proud of. There's things that I'm ashamed of. And, and when we bring up the past, I just want to move beyond those things, and I don't really want to think about them anymore. But here's the thing, is that God doesn't want you to just move on 
from your past or, or forget it or, or just get over it. God wants something better for you. He wants to redeem your past. He wants to bring good things from your past. Take a look at this verse. It says this, We know that God works all things together for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. I love that verse because it says this. It says all things. God causes everything to work together. He doesn't say, you know, some things, there are a few things uh, that God can turn around. And, and sometimes if it's not your fault, then God will sometimes turn it around and, and work it out for your good. He says, we know, we have confidence that God causes all things, everything to work for good. But it does tell us that we need to do two things. It says, for those who love God and are called according to to his purpose. Well, what does that look like? What does it look like to love God? Because if we want to have this confidence that God can turn our past around, that he can use the things in our past for our good, I think it's important that we know how to love God and how we can live according to his purpose. So here's how we love God. I, I think that at the simplest form, that we learn to love God just by knowing him. And by coming to church and by talking about God and, and by spending time with others who will encourage you and by opening up your Bible and reading about who God is, I think those things start to turn our hearts towards God. It starts to make us start to love God more, the more that we know him. See, but there's another practical thing, another practical way that we can love God. See, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And so basically Jesus says, look, if you love me, this is a way you can show it to me. By following the guidelines that I've set out. By following the instructions, by lining your life up. That's how we can love God. And so we open up our Bibles and we see the things that we should and shouldn't do. And as we start to obey and line our lives up with Scripture and with what God tells us to do, that's a practical way that we can love God. So we love God by knowing Him and by obeying His commandments. So that's the first part of that. And then there's the second part, right? Called according to His purpose. Now maybe this is where we get hung up a little bit. Maybe you're sitting here and you're saying, well, you know, that's kind of where you lose me because those who are called according to His purpose, maybe you think of someone like a pastor or a preacher on TV, but the truth is that God has given all of us a purpose. And there's something really interesting about this word called. When we look it up in the Greek, when we look at what it was really written, the word has a two-part meaning, the word called. The first part of it literally means invited. It's kind of like an invitation to dinner, like, hey, dinner's ready, come on. So literally, the first part of this word says, for all who are invited, and then the second part to this word means accepted. So to those who are called, the invitation is out there, but it's those who accept the invitation of God to live with the purpose that he has for them. See, God has a purpose for your life. There's a reason why you're here on earth. He has a design for you. And so when we live our lives and, and accept the invitation of God, and when we accept the call and, and recognize that, God, you have a purpose for my life, and I want to find it, and I want to live it, when we do those things, and when we love God, and when we, we pair that with, with uh, obeying the, his commandments, and, and by knowing him, and turning our hearts towards him, we can have a assuredness, a confident hope that all things work together for good. That means it doesn't matter what happened in your past. It doesn't matter how, how bad of a mistake you made. It doesn't matter how difficult your past has been and how ugly it's been. God can turn it around for your benefit when you love him and when you accept his invitation and live according to his purpose for your life. That's the first thing. 
that we can have a confident hope. We can have a confident hope for our past, that God wants to and can turn it around for our good. When we love him, when we accept the invitation to be called and to live according to his purpose. The second point is this, is that we have a hope for our present. We have a hope for our present. You know, life can be difficult sometimes. We have three kids under the age of three years old uh, living in our house, and I feel like sometimes life is just difficult. Like getting these kids in the bath is like a major project. Like something will happen and uh, one of the kids starts crying and screaming and kicking and the other one starts whining and uh, the other one kicks the other one on accident and they start going off and then we let the bath go and someone dumps an entire bottle of bubbles into the bath and it overflows into the entire bathroom and then water is everywhere as we're trying to clean it up and it's just like, man, life is difficult, real life experience here. Yeah, all of those things have happened. Um, But those are the least of it, right? We all face different things in life. The day-to-day of life is difficult. We all face conflict in our relationships. Maybe it's your relationships with uh, a loved one. Maybe it's a family member or, or, or someone else that you know. But we all face this conflict idea in our relationships We all face problems at work and at our jobs, and and there's difficulties. We go through sickness and health issues. We deal with depression and anxiety. We face fears and, and questions and doubts. And none of it is fun, and none of it is easy. But here's where the confidence comes in. No matter what you face, God gives us the confident hope that he wants to walk through it with you. Take a look at what it says here in the Bible. It says, don't love money, but be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you, and I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. I love this because basically in the beginning, he says, listen, I know that you're struggling. I know that your finances are, are difficult. I know that maybe it's for you, your relationships. I know that it's difficult. I know that there's things that you're going through. I know that your health is an issue. But you can be confident that God will never fail you. He will never leave you. So we can have confidence to say, that he is my helper, and I don't have to fear. See, God keeps his promises. That's why he doesn't promise that life will always be easy. He doesn't promise that life will will always just be nice and perfect and and clean and neat and Instagram-worthy. But he promises that he will always be with us even in the hard times. He promises that he'll never leave us, that he'll never forget about us. And here's the incredible part about that. We're talking about the God who created the universe. right? We're talking about the one who who hung the stars exactly where they needed to go and made up the constellations. We're talking about God who, who breathed life into the earth who created everything that we see. We're talking about him walking alongside of you in the midst of your hard times. I don't know about you, but that does make me have no fear. That brings me comfort in the midst of the chaos and the craziness of life. See, God designed and he wants you to have confidence to know that whatever you go through, it's going to be hard, it's going to be difficult, but he's there with you. We can have confidence in our past, that he can turn it around and work it for our good when we love him and we accept the invitation to live according to his purpose and we can have confidence in our present. That no matter what you're going through today, and I'm sure there's a lot of us going through a lot of things, you can have confidence that God wants to walk through it with you. The third thing, and the last one as we get ready to wrap up, is that we have a hope for our future. 
We have a hope for our future. Now, there's a pl uh, play in football called the Hail Mary. And for those of you who don't like football, here's what that play is, right? Uh, it's, it's when there's virtually no time left on the clock. And the team is down and they say, you know what? We don't really have time to work the ball up the field or to try to make something happen. So instead, we're just going to give it one last shot. And what happens is the quarterback takes the ball and he snaps it and he steps back and he throws it as far as he can. Now, whenever he throws the ball, he doesn't see any receivers open. He doesn't see that, oh, there's my teammate or there's my guy and he's going to catch it. He has no clue. He just throws it hoping that one of his teammates will be there on the other side to jump up and catch it. Now, this play doesn't work very often. It is a last-ditch effort. But I think the reality is that sometimes when it comes to our future, we live our lives a lot like a Hail Mary. I think that sometimes we you know, step back and you say, well, I don't really know, but I'm just going to kind of throw it up and I hope that I'm good enough when I die and I hope that God will accept me into heaven. Or, or maybe we say, you know, I, I know I've done a lot of bad things in my life, but if I do enough good things, then maybe it will weigh out and maybe God will just maybe forgive all of the bad stuff I've done. And, and so I think a lot of times we live our lives with this kind of false hope of just hoping that maybe we don't know what's going to happen, but we'll see, but we're hoping for the best. But God doesn't want you to live that way. God is not designed for you to live your life like a Hail Mary. See, God wants you to have a confident hope in your future. Take a look at what it says in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 5. So this says, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Goes on, it says, but God showed his great mercy for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. Goes on in verse 11, it says, So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. And I, I love this because the reality is that we've all messed up. We've all made mistakes, and we've all sinned in life. We've all gone against God's plan. And the Bible says that there's a punishment for doing it. It says that the punishment of sin is death. And so we were facing the condemnation of God. But God didn't want our sin to separate us. He wanted to have a right relationship with us. So he showed his love for us in this way. That while we are still sinners, while we still were, were living our lives, that Jesus died for us. See, Jesus came and he took our place and he took our punishment. Remember, the punishment of sin is death. And so Jesus came down and he died for us. He took our punishment upon himself. And not only did he take our punishment and, and just make us okay with God, but look at what he does. It's because of what Jesus did that we are now friends of God. I don't know about you, but me and my friends, we have pretty good relationships, right? And if I want to hang out with my friends, I don't kind of go in there all timid. Hey, I, I don't know if you maybe would want to or not, but I just thought maybe we could possibly like go out and grab something to eat, maybe. I don't do that. I stop over their house. Hey, you guys home? Hey, listen, I'm here. You guys want to hang out? You want to do something? There's a confidence that comes from this relationship, and that's the, the confident hope that God desires for you to have. He wants you to know that you are right with him. 
He doesn't want you to live your life like a Hail Mary, just hoping, you know, if I just can do enough good things or, or if I just say the right prayer and if I just say the, the right prayer so many times or if I just do the right thing in the right way. See, the reality is God loved you before you ever did anything right. He wanted a relationship with you before you ever did a single thing right. And so he sent his son Jesus to die for us so that we can have a confident hope in our future. That we don't have to face the condemnation, the wrath of God, because Jesus has made a way for us to be right with God, to be seen as clean and perfect and holy and all the mistakes and all the bad things washed away. He gives us a hope and a confidence that we can step into a, a relationship with God without fear. As we get ready to close, I'm going to invite Phil and Christina. They're going to come back up and we're going to play one other song. I also wanted to invite our leadership team. If you guys will come up, we're going to end a little bit differently today. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to sing one more song. And I think it's important that we don't just listen to words. Right? We don't just listen to the, the, the words that are said and say, well, that's nice. But it's important that we do something and we respond. Just kind of like the beginning, right? Where, where it says that God opens up an invitation and we have to do the second part. We need to respond to what God wants to do. So here's what we're going to do is we're going to sing one more song and, and we're going to take a moment just to respond. Now, our leadership team is up here because... They, they want to be available to pray with you. Listen, if you are going through something and you heard this first part and you said, you know what? I want to have that confident hope. I want to have confident hope in my past that God can turn my past around and he can work it for good. And I want to have that confidence and I want to know what that looks like. If you're saying, you know what, I, I have trouble loving God and, and I want someone to pray with me or pray for me. I want to know that I have purpose in life and, and I want to accept the invitation to start living my life with purpose. I mean, come up and pray, please. If you're sitting here today and you're going through something and you're struggling and your present situation is difficult and you're like, man, it's tough and it's difficult and I don't know how am I going to get through it? But you want to have a confident hope that God, the God of the universe, is walking with you through it. If you want to have that confidence, you want someone to pray with you with your situation that you're going through, please come up. Or if you're sitting here today and you say, I want to have a confidence in my future. I want to know I don't want to live my life just hoping or, or, or thinking that maybe, but I, I want to know and I want to be sure that I'm right with God and that my relationship with Him is solid. If that's you, come up and pray, please. It's important that we as a church are real and that we live life together. No one's perfect. I am surely not. We all go through things. And so we want to be here as a leadership team. We want to be with you. We want to support you. We want to pray with you. And so what I would encourage us to do, if we can all stand as we sing this last song. And at any point during this song, if you want prayer, please come up. Come up and pray with someone, please. Let's sing this song.
God, you are perfect, even though our pasts are not perfect, God. God, you are strong even when we are weak. God, in our present situations, you can give us strength and, and hope. God, and you're secure, we can trust you for our future. God, we're grateful that's who you are. God, I pray for those who are struggling with their past. God, I pray that you show up in such a real way in their lives, that you show that you're the redeemer. God, I pray that you show up as, as the one who can work things together for good. And God, I pray for our hearts, that you would help us to love you. God, and help us to answer the call and, and live according to the plans that you have for our lives and, and step into our purpose. God, I pray that you help us to do that so we can have confidence that all things will work for our good. God, I pray that you would help us in our present for those walking through hard things in life, God, that you'd show up and intervene and, and switch the course of things. God, I pray that you redeem and restore situations and, and, and relationships. God, I pray that you fix things that we think are broken. God, I pray that you strengthen us. Help us to get through it. God, I, I pray for our future. God, I pray for anyone who made a choice today to follow you and, and to be certain of that future. God, I pray that you fill them with your hope and with your love and with your joy. With the confidence to know that you have good things in store for us. God, we don't have to hope and guess, but we can have an assuredness, God, and we're grateful for that. God, we love you, and we thank you so much, God. You are good to us. We pray that you would help us to feel your presence more, to recognize you more, and to live our lives for you. God, we love you, and we praise you, and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Guys, I'm so glad you're here. This is just the start of Football Sunday. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the day hanging out and building relationships. Um, guys, here's what I would ask. If you made a decision today, if you made a decision to trust God with your future or to trust God with your past, just t tell someone. If, so, if you came with someone, just tell them today. Say, listen, I, I made a choice to have a confidence in God. That's a great thing to live life together. I just want to talk about a few practical things as we move into Football Sunday right now uh, to the rest of the day. If you have kids who are in the bigs class, if you can go and check them out as soon as possible, because what's going to happen is uh, we're going to have some workers going in there as soon as all of the kids are checked out and coming out and setting up tables. We're going to set up some tables in here. Uh, we're going to take about five minutes and all of this room will get transformed. Uh, we'll bring out the food and then we're going to do the chili cook-off. If you find a seat at the table, uh, we'll bring the chilies and, and you some scorecards and everything. We'll get the game on and uh, it's going to be a great time. So I'd encourage you to stick around, even text someone, call someone, tell them to come now. It's still okay. Um, but let's do that. If you have kids, go check them out. And then we will uh, throw on some music and we will get this place transformed in the next five minutes. Thanks.